Overview of JNDI, Object Serialization and Internalization. Hello everyone, I'm Sukanya from Guidu Hub Technology and in this video we are going to discuss firstly about JNDI, then Object Serialization and then what is Internalization. JNDI or Java Naming and Directory Interface enables Java platform based application to assess multiple naming and directory services. Part of the Java Enterprise Application Interface API set, JNDI makes it possible for developers to create portable applications that are enabled for number of different naming and directory services, which include file system, directory services such as lightweight directory access protocol, LDAP, novel directory services and network information system, NIS, and distributed object systems such as common object request broker architecture, CORBA, Java Remote Method that is RMI and Enterprise Java Beans that is EJB. Now this is the diagram you can see here for the architecture of JNDI. The layer is Java application, then JNDI API, then the naming manager and then JNDI SIP that is Service Provider Interface which provides LDAP, DNS, NIS, NDS, Remote Invocation and that RMI registry also and then CORBA, all these implementation possibilities are given by JNDI. Now some of the directory services that JNDI provides are Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, Domain Name Service that is DNS, Java Remote Method Invocation which is used for any uh, registry of any particular domain service, the above mentioned directories that are JNDI SPI integrates with and builds a platform with JNDI implementation possibilities. So there are several JNDI packages. There are five, namely five packages in Java using JNDI SPI. Some of the packages are having javax.naming. The javax.naming is a package where it contains classes and interfaces for assessing naming services. So with the help of class and interface, basically these naming or assessing of the names can be done. There are functions like lookup, list binding, name, etc. The second one is java.naming.directory. This package helps in getting the data as objects and is an advanced version of java.naming directory. There are also other packages in java.naming.event and java.naming.spi. So these all are the Java packages or the JNDI packages which helps us to assess the naming services with the help of several classes and interfaces. Next come is object serialization. Serialization as we all know is a mechanism for converting the state of one object into a particular byte stream. To make the Java object serializable, we implement the java.io input output serializable interface. With the help of that particular interface, we can make any Java object serializable. For example, serializing the object we call the write object method object output stream and for deserialization we call the read object from the input object input stream class such as public final void write object in the object obj which throws an input output exception so this particularly can be object serialized there are several advantages of serialization and those are to save and persist the state of an particular object to travel an object across the network these all can be done with the help of java serialization this is the advantage now what is java.io serializable interface so serializable is a marker interface has no data member and method actually it is used to mark java classes so that the objects of these classes may get a certain capability the clonable or remote are also the marker interfaces it must be implemented by the class whose object you want to persist the object which you are assessing for that we need the serializable interface or we also call the marker interface the string class and all the wrapper classes implement the java.io.serializable interface by default. Next is object output stream class. The object output stream class is used to write the primitive data types and the Java objects to a particular output stream. Only objects that supports the java.io serializable interface can be written in these streams. So now there are some important methods in that and the descriptions are First method is public final void write object, the object keyword and the object name throws input output exception. So it writes the specified object to the object output stream. Similarly, there is flush. So it flushes the current output stream. And then there is close is close is the current output stream. 
next is for object input it actually inputs that reads from the specific input stream it also has similar method close like an object output stream similar in the object input stream it closes the input stream now here you can see there are two programs written this first program you have to save with the name student.java i have saved by that name and i have imported the serializable marker particular package and then public class student implement serializable this interface serializable i have implemented that's why it is an interface i have used the keyword implements for class 2 interface it is having two fields that is id and name public student that class is having int id and string id then i have used this pointer for id and this name is for the name next for persisting the object of that particular class i have created a student object new student and the id and the name is mentioned in the file output stream i have created a new file name abc text and in that particular text i have written this object s1 of this particular student and after this completion of the compilation running is done there will be a abc.txt file created you can see that in that particular text file you, the data which you have entered there will be written so what should we do firstly we should compile the student file then we have to compile the persist file and then we have to run the persist file so that a new abc file is created using that particular object that is persisted for this particular new student a new object that is id having one two three and the name is ankit and after that thing is done the file is created it will print success so let us firstly write both the programs compile them and run the persist class file of the dot java file so here you can see that I have written the code of both the files which I have just now explained. This is the serializable I have used here and this is in the public int void statement I have used a new student object and the new file name which I have given is abc.txt. Now what I have to do is firstly I will compile the student file I have compiled here it is having no errors. Similarly I will compile the persis java file also. If there are any errors it will be displayed after that so there are no errors in these both the coding portion of these both files now what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the class file of persis so that a particular entry is made and then a file is created and this entry is been inserted which will be in the java programs folder where i am running the particular commands or the console so as i do that it is going to print success which means a file is created and what has done that particular entry have been also made so let us check in the java programs here you can see that a file text document abc is created and as i open that particular file whatever entry whatever thing i have written is being inserted in that file so it is inserted student id and the name of that student that is ankit so this is how serializability works in java and this is how a file is created with the help of input output stream the next thing is internationalization also known as i18n the process of designing web applications in such a way that which provides support for various countries and languages and various currency automatically without performing any change in the application is called as internationalization that means you can see that several applications are having various kind of languages or the country time or various country currency it operates on so rather than writing the code again and again for different kind of currency we use the concept of internationalization now we can implement it internationalization by using the three classes local class number format and the date format so here you can see that a class number format demo is created a double d is a particular entry been made and then a number format is used for get instance of that local italy and then italy representation of d and then again for the numbers and how it gets represented in that nf format we have used on this particular d number so let us execute this format and see that how representation actually works so here you can see that i have written the particular code which i just now explained for a number format demo and that number is particularly in double i have mentioned now i have compiled the file over here javac pr2.java is the name of my file and then i have run the class file and it displays the italy representation of this particular number format is like this so this is how actually the internationalization work for many web applications of which supports for various countries languages and currencies automatically without changing in the application so by the end of this video we have studied about internationalization the methods of which of object input stream class and object output stream class and then how serializable interface work for the theoretical portion you can refer to the tutorial and for upcoming concepts and programs of java we will look into further videos 
थैंक यू